In this video, I'm going to go through an example that we worked through in the class that meets on campus. This example is called the Greenville Construction Company. The scenario is that we're a construction company and we built three houses this month. You can see pictures of the houses. You can see there are different styles. One is extremely fancy and large. One is a, more of a standard house. And one is a small starter home. We carefully, we as a company, traced our direct materials and direct labor cost that went into each house. And in the box you can see what the materials and labor costs that went into each house, what those are. Well, the company also has some overhead costs. We have several supervisors that we pay who travel from house to house. And the construction guys use a lot of indirect materials, drywall, cement, nails, screws. So indirect materials are items that are too small or too inexpensive to bother tracing how many we used on each of the three houses. So all of that together totals $90,000. So the cost of any product, in this case a house, is made up of three items, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So our task becomes, how do we assign, or what we call allocate, the $90,000 of overhead to each of the three houses that we constructed? So for this scenario, assume that you are the project manager for the smallest house. I have one project manager for each house, and yours is house three. And as a project manager of house three, at the end of the year, I will evaluate you based on the difference between the cost of the house and what we were able to sell it for. So you have an incentive to keep the cost down. Letter A says, assume that we have our meeting, myself, the CEO, and my three project managers, and I tell each of you that I'm going to allocate overhead equally between the three houses. Requirement A says calculate the total cost of each house for our company. So if I'm going to split the overhead equally, there's 90,000 of overhead, and there's three houses. So 90,000 divided by three is $30,000 per house. Now you can see I have allocated overhead equally to each house. Now you total up the materials, labor, and overhead to get what is the total cost for each house. House number one, when you add materials, labor, and overhead, you get 380000 House number two is 230000 House number three, 180000 So that was a simple allocation of overhead. Allocation was 90000 divided by three. At this point, you should ask yourself, is that a good way or even a fair way to allocate overhead costs? These three houses are of different sizes and different complexity. So do you think they each used an equal amount of indirect materials, an equal amount of supervisor attention? I'm going to guess no, that the more complex house used a lot more indirect materials than the starter home and probably required much more supervisory skills than building a simple box home. So then maybe there's a better way to allocate overhead. In part B, I asked the class to come up with what they think would be a more fair way to allocate overhead once I get them to agree that it doesn't seem fair to just allocate it equally among the three houses since the houses are of different sizes and different complexities. One proposal that students have made, and we'll apply it here, is they said maybe there's a relationship between how much material, direct materials and direct labor went into a house and how much supervising and indirect materials that house used. And I agree, that sounds rational. So when you make an argument like that, you're making an argument about what's called a cost driver. You're saying, what drives the cost of supervision? Maybe it's the complexity of the house and how much materials and labor went into it. What drives the cost of indirect materials? Well, maybe the more direct materials you use, also the more indirect materials you use. So what the students proposed is that we add up the direct materials and direct labor for each house make a total pile, all three houses, direct material, direct layer, add all that up, and then look at each house one at a time and say what fraction of the total materials and labor went into that house. So let's walk through that systematically. So add up direct materials, direct labor of all three houses together. What you're going to find is that totals 700,000. Okay, so at the top I've got the direct cost of each house, the direct materials, direct labor, Add them up for all three houses. Over on the far right, you can see that it's going to add up to an even 700,000. 
Step number one, determine the allocation rate. So in the numerator, you put your cost that you want to allocate, which is the overhead. That's what we're trying to decide how to spread that across three houses. And in the bottom, you put your base. Now, originally, my base was three. I just argued I'm going to divide by three. Now we've decided to be a little more sophisticated. We've decided we're going to allocate it based on direct cost, direct materials and direct labor that go into each house. So now my allocation base is $700,000 of direct cost. So when I multiply that out, that's going to give me a percentage. So 90,000 divided by 700,000 is 0.13. So we're going to figure out what is that telling us? So I, as a CEO, will tell my project managers that for this month, when they're constructing a house, for every $1 of direct cost they put in, whether it's direct materials or direct labor, whenever they put a dollar into that house, I'm going to also add 13 cents to cover the overhead cost of the business for the year. All right, so let's go to step two. Let's use that 0.13 to allocate overhead to the three houses. All right, so here's our chart. Allocation rate's going to be the same for each house, so I'll fill that in. Step two of the table, weight of base. So for each house, how much direct materials and direct labor went into that house? House number one had 350, as you can see from the bottom of the screen. House number two used $200,000 of direct cost. House number three used $150,000 of direct cost. Remember, house number three was a small starter home. It didn't take as much materials or labor to put that one together. All right, so multiply each of those by 0.13 to get how much of the 90,000 will be allocated to that house. So multiplying across, those are the allocations. So house number one will be allocated 45,500 of overhead, house two 26,000, house three 18,5. Now this adds up to 90,000, but I forced it to. The 0.13 had been rounded. Up at the top when we did 90 divided by 700. If you do that yourself on a calculator, it's actually like 0.128 and then a bunch of numbers. So I rounded it to 0.13. So I went ahead with house number three, forced it to be a number that would make the total allocation 90,000. So I'm going to drop those into the table to figure out the total cost per house. Okay, there's the overhead numbers. I took them from the table above put them right into the table below. Now it's a simple adding up of each house's materials, labor, and overhead. So at the bottom of the screen, you can now see with my new calculation what the company would consider each of the three houses to have cost to construct. Let's look just at house three, the small starter home. Under this approach, it says that to construct this home, materials, labor, and overhead total 168,500. If you think back to earlier when I just allocated overhead equally to each of the three houses, at that point I was assuming house three costs 180 to construct. Now that's a big difference because you got to think the construction company with this information is going to go price that house in the market and try to sell it. We want to make sure we're making a good enough profit on each of the houses. So it's very important for the company to get good pricing information. And that's where overhead allocation comes in. You have to figure out the correct base so that you get good information.